all right so today we're going to be checking out how to use the uh, strategy tester and we're going to be using the most common pair europe us dollar and i'm going to go ahead and just show y'all i uh, pop up my galileo fx on there it's already on here it's usually just a drag and drop just like that and uh, you go ahead and um, set it up don't worry about the settings just make sure it's not on go to expert advisors right click expert advisors go across and go to strategy tester and this little screen is going to pop up settings optimization results results graph report and journal these are all the settings and the tabs up here on the bottom on over here i usually put use date on the use date i go for the current week or the or the most current week uh the last couple of days uh right here i'm going to go ahead and put today so from the 10 3 to 10 7 which is this week and uh, if you're at the beginning of the week you use the last couple of days from last week uh, for the period I'm gonna go ahead and put M1 so what we're doing here is it takes a couple of steps first we need to find out the uh, trend whether it's a, a long trend or a short trend long trend means that it's going up or uptrend or buy downtrend means a uh, short or sell going down and we need to find out which way whether it's up or down that it's making the most money so that's the first thing we're gonna do the next thing we're gonna do is find out uh, the period uh, the best time frame to do it in M1 M5 or M15 which is what I do you can choose any time frame you want and after that we're gonna optimize and find out the best settings for it so once you got all this down for every tick I'm gonna go to the top setting every tick the most precise method I'm gonna keep that on there I'm not gonna do visual mode visual mode really slows it down for the spread I'm gonna go ahead and put current and period M1 just to start on expert settings uh, my lots are usually at zero which is dynamic what that means is that uh, whatever risk in percentage it is at, that's how much uh, percentage of your balance that it's going to use for the lot size for myself I'm going to use a 1% risk that means that if I have two thousand dollars it's going to use one percent of that for every trade so two hundred dollars per trade or two dollars per trade one or the other so uh, the average trader uses 1%, the riskier trader uses 2%. I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and put 1%. For the people in Canada or United States or anybody going under anti-hedging or um, FIFO rules, it means that uh, you cannot buy and sell at the same time for the same pair for your Europe US dollar. And also that you have to close the uh, orders the same way you open them. If you open them 1, 2, 3, 4, you have to close them 1, 2, 3, 4 uh in the same order that you open them so in order to avoid that i go ahead and put max orders one next we're going to go ahead and change all this to zero stop loss zero take profit zero trailing start 30 and trailing step zero for the consecutive bullish and bearish i'm going to go ahead and change that to five according to galileo five and five uh, is usually the most um uh the most dependable minimum all right uh on my more riskier settings i go for three and three but for now, for this, we're just going to go ahead and do 5 and 5. For testing, we're going to go ahead and put long only, which is going uphill. And I'm going to put positions long only, balance, and genetic algorithm checked on. Initial deposit, 2,000. All right. And, uh, oh, one more thing. Do not worry for the inputs. Do not worry about the start, step, and stop. Don't worry about those yet. That's for the optimization. Just focus on the values. The magic number, just leave it as is unless you have multiple different EAs. For example, auto charges, BBEA, anything. If you're just using Galileo and you're not using any other EA, then leave the magic number as is. If you're using um, different EAs, the magic number is 746 or something like that. It shows it on the settings somewhere for the guide. All right. So moving on, I'm going to go ahead and put start. Now what I'm looking for here is in the results tab. I'm going to scroll all the way down. I'm going to scroll all the way down and uh, do not look at this close that stop number for the balance. Don't look at that number. You're looking at the last stop loss. All right. Or the last take profit, which is right here. $3.24 total. Okay. I'm going to write that number down, 324. And I'm going to go ahead and go back. And that means that when it was going uphill, it only made $3.20. Now I'm going to change this short only, click OK, and start. 
go back to the results after it finishes calib doing all that done and now it's nine dollars and ten cents that means it made more money going down than it made going up i'm gonna go back up one more time and do long and short just to make sure sometimes long and short gives better results go ahead and put start results scroll down seven dollars and sixty six cents all right so i'm gonna go ahead and leave it on short because it gave me the most money and I'm only doing this because I actually calibrate every day. Uh, for the people calibrating um, weekly, you might want to just leave it on long and short. That way you don't have to change it too much. Uh, so I left it at 30. Okay, the next step. Now, now that we have it on short only, we know the trend. It's a downtrend. Uh, I'm going to start finding out the best time frame. I usually trade in one to three time frames. M1, M5, or M15. You can trade in higher time frames, but I find that it's more satisfying seeing the faster turnabouts. So now I know that it, it returns seven dollars for the M1. I'm gonna go ahead and try the M5. Scroll all the way down, four dollars and fifty-six cents. So it's less money. And one more time at the M15. Go back to results and a dollar. So it's giving me more money on the M1 time frame. So I'm gonna leave it at the M1. You usually want to check it every every couple of steps into it. Check it one more time before you uh, go ahead and go live for these settings. Now the next step is we got the trend, we got the best time frame. Now we're gonna have to start optimizing. All right. So for this, go ahead and click the optimization little check mark right here at the bottom, and then go to expert properties. Now there's several ways we can do this. First off, we're gonna go ahead and go down to the bullish and bearish and leave it at five and five because I find that that's the um, well, it's not really the best settings. I get a little bit riskier. And I go to zero and zero or one and one, but for this purpose and because Galileo says don't do less than five, they don't recommend it. We're gonna leave it at five and five. For start, right here, I'm gonna go five, and what this means is that uh, it's it's gonna start different settings, so it's gonna run a bunch of different settings all at once to find the best settings for us to use. All right, it's gonna start on five and it's gonna go six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Same thing on the bearish, it's gonna go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and turn these off for now. All right, so whatever check mark is, that's that's what it's gonna check for you. All right, so now we're gonna find the best bullish and bearish signals for us to work with, and we're gonna push start. And it's gonna run it through. Now we're gonna go to results again, and for this, oh, optimization results. And for this, go ahead and push profit, so my highest profit is five dollars and it comes in from this one to this one all right so between these we're getting so for here we're looking for the least drawdown so nine dollars and eighty cents is the basic drawdown everything's pretty much the same so any one of these settings will work so five bullish ten bearish five nine five eight five seven and five six all of these return the same numbers so what we want to do is we know it's making money going down and that's what it's showing um so I'm going to leave it at, uh, with everything being the same, I'm going to leave it at five, five, um, five, eight. Now for this, you can open up even more settings. Let's go ahead and, uh, I'm going to click on all of these. And the thing is that for these, it takes quite a bit longer and I don't really want to do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change the bearish to six just to keep it nice and even and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off now the next thing we're gonna be checking is these take profit stop loss trailing start and trailing step all right we're, I'm gonna try to do take profit and stop loss first for here I'm gonna go ahead and start value at zero the start is 60 the take profit is 15 the step is one and one for both and I'm gonna go ahead and put a stop at 600 that means it's gonna start at 60 and every it's going to check every one point all the way down to 600 and at 15 it's going to do every one point all the way down to 600 and then finally it's going to give me uh the most profitable i'm going to go ahead and click ok and go put start and this one probably will take a little bit longer so we're just going to have to wait and there it goes so we'll go to the results here and uh, we're going to start seeing it start doing all these different calculations right here is that stop loss 452 take profit 150 so it's running every single possible combination of stop loss and take profit and it's going to 
give you the best results right here on the profit tab. So far it's at 37, it's not done yet. As you can see, it's barely even started. Now for people that want uh, to calibrate it even further, we also have the starting start step, the, what's it called? Trailing start and a trailing step. And you can also optimize those later, but because this takes so long, I'm gonna skip that for now. And I'm gonna keep it simple. make this bigger I'm gonna keep it simple and right now we are at still at 37 nope 38 so it's just gonna keep keep running a bunch of different takes profits and tape losses every single one possible all the way to 600 and why am I choosing 600 because usually I um I also do the trailing start and trailing step and what that does for me is that the trailing starting step will take most of the normal normal um profit and then when it randomly jumps up or down it'll it'll use the uh, the take profit one to get the most money out of it for now we can go ahead and look at the different properties here so we'll go to expert advisors properties and uh usually you want to keep allow live trading on and allow modification of signal settings on you want those two things on allow import of external experts what this means is that if you're running a little business and you have extra live accounts for your clients having this clicked on and having the right EA will allow the this your main account to send signals to your clients accounts and whatever trades you make here it'll be able to make them over there so normally um, oh and that's also DLL imports so that's that's usually what happens um on the inputs tab as you can see here I'm pretty risky um, but let's go ahead and go with these magic numbers as you all know you you leave that alone unless you have other EAs running like not the same EA running on different charts no other completely different EAs like for example the max max CD EA or the moving average EA completely different if you have something an, a different EA then you want to change it to seven four six I believe uh, you might want to double check that in the guide for the lots, what this does is the least amount of lots you can do, the least risk is, is 0 0.01. All right, and you just move up and down with it accordingly. When you're testing something out and you and you you have a little bit of money and you don't want to lose a lot, just put the least riskiest at 0 0.01. I, I left it at 0, 0, and what I do is I use my risk and percentage. So it uses a certain percentage of my, my open balance to open up lot sizes. And what this does for me is as my, my, my money increases, it opens up bigger lot sizes, as an, and as it decreases, it, it lowers the lot size, and that way um, I don't risk losing too much. Max orders is one. Uh, for Galileo to work the best, you want to keep that at a, at a certain number higher than one, maybe a five, six, or ten, or whatever. I'm not really into that because I, I'm under these regulations, these, these regulations from anti-hedging and the... Um, FIFA regulations uh, so I can't really go past one I've tried different ways of go getting around it and uh, this one gives me the least headaches if we just leave it at one okay um, for now let's just go ahead and it looks like it finished optimizing I'm gonna go ahead go ahead into my optimization results click profit and scroll all the way up okay profit $38.55 and right here, this is where it tells you, at a stop loss of 111 and at a take profit of 147, it gave me the most profit. Obviously, look, you have a lot of different um, options down here that give you $38.55. So uh, you just have to learn how to differentiate between each one. Usually, you want to pay attention to having the least amount of drawdown. Um, so at 38.55 right here. So the drawdown is basically the same as well. And when you have the same drawdown and the same profit, you just want to look right here at the stop loss and the take profit. You want to really choose the, the lowest take profit number. All right, anything higher 
then the lowest take profit number you, you have a chance that it will go opposite so we're at over here we're at 112 scroll down scroll down and 130 so we're gonna just go ahead and go for the 112 oh 99 awesome went away okay 99 is the lowest one so far so we're gonna keep stop loss at 111 take prop profit at 99 all right so we're gonna go ahead and go to our settings here go to the expert properties again 111 and 99 what this does is that as soon as it hits 99 points in profit it's gonna go ahead and take that I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and now I'm gonna go ahead and do the trading start and step I usually start with the trailing start and step first and then I do the take profit and stop loss but at this point you have a working working settings you should you should be fine with these calibrations I do take it a step further and I do start with the trailing start and step first because I want to get my money first and then I want to get more out of it if it jumps up randomly or drastically like in volatility and then these will pick it up the take profit will pick that up but let's go ahead and run this I keep my things at 15 it starts at 15 and it goes up one point all the way to 200 and I'm gonna keep this under 60 because I don't want it to jump too much and in trailing step I start at 5 and I'm gonna go up to 50 which usually that should be enough and let's go ahead and put start now it's gonna take a while to run these settings again so now let's go ahead and keep talking about these properties all right so usually for the bullish and bearish you want the higher number going towards the trend so if it's an uptrend you want the bullish number to be the higher number so you're going to want something like eight over five for example all right and for um the downhill you want the bearish to be higher bearish means down bullish means up so you want something like uh five bullish eight bear all right i'm not going to save that all right now let's finish off then let's go to the results profit scroll all the way up now we're up to seven seventy dollars and 44 cents and the trailing start is 59 and the trailing step is five uh because it's so close to 60 um i would rather do this one it's only two dollars off and it's a uh, it's a much lower trailing start what this means is that it'll it'll start moving your stop loss at a faster rate and it won't wait until you got 59 points later uh, so I'm, I would go ahead and go with the trailing start 30 and the trailing step 26 so for this let me go back to 30 and I thought it said 26 am I right let me go back and double check and 30 26 so I, I'll go ahead and leave it like that uh, why because it's gonna move up 30 points and it's already gonna start moving the stop loss with it All right, you want these to be as low as possible to keep and and also to keep the high amount the highest amount of profit with it So those are my last configurations 111 99 30 and 26 with the bullish and bearish 5 and 6 Let's go ahead and put okay go ahead and put uh, Take off the optimization and go ahead and start to look at the actual results Let's go ahead and put go to the report and we made a profit of fifty two dollars graph you see as it goes up here it starts making more and more money and towards the end right here between the 28 and the 34 you see that it's starting to go down what does this mean this means that um that it looks like it's about to start going up on on an uptrend you can see it right here it looks like it's about to start an uptrend uh let me go ahead and this was number 28 number 28 on 10 6 so on Wednesday it looks like it started having an uptrend all right we're gonna have to we're gonna go ahead and double check that let's go ahead and uh, go on our h4 chart scroll to the side and right here it shows that it is starting to go on an uptrend um, I don't know if I can zoom in here all right so on the you had a downtrend from the fourth and right here it shows that it's about to start an uptrend all right so that's just for you to see um, 
sooner or later it is going to start going up let me go to the day one but so far it shows that it's still going to be going down it just had a one little moment of of down of of up so if you want if you were on a daily thing you would probably go on the it's up to you but my point being is that the number one rule for traders is you have to follow the current trend don't try to predict the trend if i was trying to predict the trend to me i would start going up up but lately i've been losing a lot of my ups so i'm going to keep it down and follow the current trend period that's it if you lose money you lose money but you have to stay you, you can't be like the tides in, in the ocean you can't be going up and down at the same time that that means you get you get nowhere you just end up with a losing streak so the number one rule is follow the current trend don't try to predict the trend don't try to see where it's going according to my charts it is going to start going up soon so what i would do is i would keep everything the same keep everything short but i would probably change my risk lower so i'll probably go down to like a uh, 0.5 percent or change this to a 0.01 or whatever you want to do just lower your risk a little bit because you're thinking that it's going to start going the opposite direction soon once it does that you can go back to normal um so that's about it um if you do want to and this is what i do this takes a lot longer uh i click everything and i do it all at once it takes like an extra couple of minutes and i didn't want to do this because of this video and i put everything to zero like this I change these to a one okay I, and I keep all this stuff the same my stop loss my take profit just make sure everything is exactly the same as mine and I put okay and what this does is it optimizes everything from the beginning to the end it does the it does the bull and bear it does the take profit the stop loss oh, sorry about that make sure you got optimization on it does everything for you uh, and this does take a lot longer uh, but it's a little bit more accurate and what you want to do is uh, it's going to give you all the answers for you it's going to tell you what to put for the bull what to put for the for the bear what to put for the stop loss take profit the trailing start the trailing step it tells you everything all right you just have to figure out the the long and short or long only or short only and you have to figure out the period for yourself okay and this does take a while but like I said, it looks like it's going to start going up soon. But because the number one rule is follow the trend, then you just stick to that rule. Don't try to predict, oh, yeah, it's going to go up. Now I'm going to try to go up. I've lost so much money trying to predict the trend, thinking that it's going to go up, and it doesn't, and it keeps going down. Follow the current trend and stay glued to that. That's your number one rule. Don't change it. While it does that, let's keep going on to these properties. Okay, so... The thing that a lot of people don't know and they barely start trading is these um right here these time frames what does m1 m5 m15 m30 means okay each one of these lines right here for example this h4 every four hours is going to move on to another line so each one of the lines means four hours of of changes and directions this one means every one every one minute is a change of direction this one means every five minutes is a change of direction each is a is a little line I always keep mine in the candlestick right here this little button right here yours is probably not in the same position I screwed mine up and it moved all over the place it used to be somewhere in the middle but I, I keep mine on the candle candlestick pattern the black green ones means that it, it went up the white ones means it's going down all right how does this work for Galileo what this means is that it, every one minute is going to show an up or a down tick right here it's either going to show a white or a black one as you can see this current minute is going up or down you're gonna see more results on the m1 m5 m15 settings because for Galileo it works on consecutive bulls and consecutive bears a white candle is a bear a black candle is a bull which means it's going up or down all right so so if you have let's say five consecutive bulls and, and five consecutive bears it's gonna wait until five bulls are made before it opens a buy trade so for example right here one two three four five boom it's going to open a buy trade and it's going to start trading if you have four bears it's going to wait till it goes down for one two three four and it's going to open a sell trade you see that okay so 
if this is every one minute and you have four bears that means it's going to wait one two three four minutes before it opens up a trade if you go up to the time frame it's going to wait for the m5 is going to wait 5 10 15 20 minutes before it opens up a buy five, or 5 10 15 20 minutes before so you get me so the higher the time frame the longer it's going to take Galileo to open up a trade right here is every 15 minutes so 15 30 45 one hour one hour to open up a actually longer an hour and 15 minutes which is the least um, least riskiest settings according to Galileo five bears uh, so an hour and 15 minutes before it will even thinking about opening up a trade all right so don't be impatient if you have something set up for an hour it's gonna wait one two three four five hours depending on how many consecutive bulls or bears so minimum is gonna wait however many bulls and bears times the hours the, the, the times the time frame you understand before it opens up a trade so the higher one you have on here the more you have to wait all right so I always keep the M1 M5 M15 because I can see it going on faster um, so now let's go to the um, properties all right so that's the way consecutive bulls and consecutive bear signals works it's gonna wait three bulls three up signals before if before it thinks about opening up a trade or it's gonna wait th four bear signals before it opens up a trade on here because the bearer is higher than the bull it's gonna lean towards opening up sell trades that means it's gonna lean towards opening up a sell trade which means that even if it goes up a certain amount it's gonna wait until it goes down and it opens up a sell trade in many occasions it also opens up the sell trade even though it starts going up so if it goes up three bulls it, it might still open up a sell trade I don't really understand how Galileo works in that aspect. Um, another thing, this sad face and this smiley face. It always needs to be a smiley face. If it's not a smiley face, um, you either have two things going wrong. First off, you have to allow live trading. You have to keep that checked. Another thing is you have to keep turn on auto trading over here. Turn that on up here. Both need to be on in order for Galileo to be working. All right. Next. What else can I explain? Okay, trailing start and trailing step. How does this work? Trailing start means that it's it's a it's a it's a little program that after a certain amount of points, points and pips are different. Every 10 points is one pip. All right. So after 149 points or 14 pips, it's going to activate this. And then it's going to set a stop loss. It's called trailing step, but it, this is a moving stop loss. It's going to set a stop loss at 14 points. Okay. That means that as soon as it starts getting profit, it's going to, and it hits this, that means it's going to set a, a stop loss at 14 points. That means you do not have to worry about losing money anymore. You're only going to be worried about losing profit. So that's why I was saying that you want to keep this trailing start as low as possible because you want to start saving that stop loss fast all right and after that it'll move up every 14 points the take profit obviously once it hits the take profit it'll close the account same thing with the stop loss but in reverse uh once it hits the 68 negative it'll it'll place a stop loss okay so now it looks like it's stopped so it'll go ahead and go to the optimization reports remember for this one i i was placing as riskiest as possible and it made me a $306 profit. Why did it make such a big difference in profit? Uh, because this pro program isn't worried about risk. It's based on the past. If you would have kept these settings, it would have made $306 profit in, in a perfect world. Okay? With a drawdown of $269. What's a drawdown? That means how much is going to go negative before it's going to give you profit. So it's, it, these, on average, it went negative $269 before it finally gave you a profit of $306. So be very prepared for seeing very large numbers in the negatives. Okay. And right here. Um, oh, my percent risk wasn't on. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Don't worry about it. Um, I had that on to check. Obviously, the more percent risk you have, the more money you're going to make. Anyways, um, 
So now these are the settings. You have a stop loss of 87, a take profit of 142, a trailing start of 60, and a trailing step of 9 with a bullish 2 and a bearish 7. So it's a strong bearish. All right. And this would make you the most money. If I scroll down, let's see, at my percent risk 1, because I didn't want to do that. So that was my fault. So what this does, it, it gives you the perfect settings from a perfect world. And if you had everything perfect, that's how much money you would have made. Um, so let me see if I can find my percent risk at one. That way I don't have to rerun everything. There it is. Boom. That was negative. So, yeah, sorry about that. Anyways, I'm going to have to rerun it all over again if I want to do the right percentage. And that, that'll give you the most perfect settings in a perfect world. And those are the settings I use because I'm, I'm not really worried about my risk or whatever. I understand that I might lose money in some trades or I might lose money in a month or whatever. That's the basic thing of it. But you have to stay constant somewhere. So... If you want to have less riskier settings, you would have made that seventy dollars um, in a less riskier world. It would have been uh, the settings would have been uh, above five and everything. Um, but I, I don't really care about risk. I understand there's risk, and you have to place trust in in the in the program at some point. Okay, so these are the things I would have used. I would have used the stop loss of eighty seven, take profit of one forty two. Trailing start of 60, trailing step of 9, and a bullish 2 and a bearish 7. Okay, with my latest information here. Okay, and all I do now is I right click, go to my expert advisors, properties, and I input all that in here, and I move on. Okay, and that's how it works. If you have any questions, hit me up. Do, do not worry about uh, annoying me because it's a message. I can get to it when I get to it. All right.